Hey, what's up, Temple fam? It's your boy MJ, and today we're gonna be turning the world upside down. childhood role models and in fact still one of my role models was one of the first people I saw handstand. Clips from movies such as Wheels on Mills, Rumble in the Bronx and even pictures of him training as a kid inspired me to want a handstand. Handstands are a huge part of what we do here at the temple. As a basic movement they set you up for so many more advanced movements from things like handsprings, finger handstands and so much more. Now we ain't no gymnastics school, so don't be calling me out if my form is 100% perfect. Just take a chill pill, sit back, and let those who will progress from this video do so. So before we get into the workout itself, I want to talk a little bit about what handstands mean to me. I feel that if you're upside down and on your hands, you're in a handstand. Professional form or not, it is what it is. I remember as a little kid calling my mom into the front room and doing handstands for hours on end. It used to be one or two seconds and if I ever hit some like five seconds I was so hyped. But eventually I built myself up to about 15-20 seconds. I could even do some push-ups in a handstand position. So don't always focus on form, instead enjoy the process and enjoy what you're doing. Now I was a kid quite a while ago, so I don't have any pictures or videos, but take my word for it, I used to work real hard. Form was probably horrendous. It's not that I didn't care about form, it's that I didn't know. So work with what you've got and always stay positive. Over time, you'll develop good form, that's for sure. But for now, just focus on enjoying flipping your life upside down. As Billy Sunday said, the world is wrong side up. It needs to be turned upside down in order to be right side up. So with that being said, let's turn our life upside down and get to this workout. Before we get into it, I'm gonna take some BCAAs, another muscle range product I use. I like to take half a scoop in the morning and half a scoop during my workout. Then the shaker goes, shake it up. Wild berry flavor tastes awesome. You get yourself some. Okay, so our first exercise, we're doing handstands, but we're actually gonna start with a headstand. A headstand is a lot easier than a handstand because you can utilize a triangle shape, a tripod style shape, which helps keep you balanced and at the same time allows you to develop a nice straight line and obviously gives you the confidence to be upside down. Handstands are real tricky to find balance. Headstands, a hell of a lot easier. So check it out. We're gonna go for a 30 second headstand. Hands side by side, parallel. You can imagine a triangle right here. The head is going to go on this point, go down, lift up, and back. And you'll see when you're in a headstand, it's a lot easier to keep a nice stacked straight line opposed to arching your back, which is really bad. Tiring for your back and hard to balance. So you want to work on keeping a nice straight line. The more time you spend upside down, the more confident you're going to be. So when you're here in a headstand, whether it's freestanding or against the wall, just looking around and learning how to balance yourself when you're flipped upside down. Last 10 seconds. All right, so again, with your headstand, you just wanna work on that triangle shape. That's gonna help keep you stable and balanced, which will help you build your confidence while upside down. I've seen tons and tons of handstand tutorials on YouTube. None of them, or maybe some of them, utilize this headstand technique. I think it's an essential part of the process of learning to be upside down. So give that a shot, 
go for 30 seconds and slowly build yourself up to a minute. Next, we move on to handstand walk-ups. This is where we use a wall, so we've got this wall right here, and we're actually gonna face away from the wall, put our hands on the floor and walk ourselves up, getting as close to the wall as possible. And what we wanna do is stack ourselves up. Elbows on top of wrists, shoulders on top of elbows, hips on top of shoulders, and then knees and ankles. Imagine stacking bricks up. If they're perfectly stacked, they'll stay balanced. If they're not perfectly stacked, they'll fall. The only way to hold them in place if they're not stacked is to actually use power, use muscle. So if you're not in a straight line, you have to engage so many muscles just to hold, it's gonna tire you out. So working on stacking yourself in the correct position is essential. Check it out. Hands on the floor, one leg up, another leg, and slowly walk towards the wall and get as close as you can Stacking yourself in a nice straight line. Do your best not to arch like this. Keep it straight. And again, we'll go for 20 to 30 seconds. Really push through your palms into the floor. Bend your fingers and engage. Keep your stomach tight. Don't arch on your back. Head tucked, point those toes, and when you're ready to come down, you can just roll out just like that. Next exercise handstand kick ups. This one is similar to the one we just done. This time you're going to start facing the wall and you're going to kick up. Now, this one, as essential as it is, it's important that from the get go you're focused on your line. This one is a hell of a lot easier to end up in a real bad banana shape, which as I mentioned earlier, form shouldn't be your main focus at the start, but you do want to obviously work on keeping good form to an extent. So don't do it like this. One of the ways to fix that banana shape is to get a little closer to the wall you'll have a tendency to be further from the wall so that you feel you can hit the wall and stay balanced. But really that shouldn't be your goal. You're actually just using the wall to help stabilize your handstand rather than leaning on it. So rather here and fully leaning on the wall, you should be fairly close to the wall and just touching the wall to help you stay balanced. Check it out, this is how you wanna do it. Pretty close to the wall. Still in a nice straight line. Just like with the previous exercises, you're going to hold for between 20 to 30 seconds. Again, focus on keeping everything straight, stacked. Engage your fingers. When you're ready to come down, bring one leg down and push off down. On to the next exercise, carrying on from what we've just done, wall kick-ups. We're now gonna do a wall kick-up, find that balance, and then we're gonna slowly bring our feet away from the wall. Now the trick with this one is don't push too hard where you fall back down. Instead, just slightly come away from the wall and if you need to, fall back into the wall and keep playing with this until you find balance. I'm gonna go up, keep your eyes on my feet, and you'll see that I'm not actually touching the wall. I get up, stack myself, and slowly pull my feet away from the wall. And if I need to, I just touch the wall, regain balance. play with that eventually you'll build that kind of spatial awareness and confidence that you require when you're doing this movement on the floor. A big mistake when you're practicing against the wall which will stop you when you do your free handstand is when you crash into the wall like so. 
put in too much power to get up, you're gonna get used to the wall stopping you. When you do this on the floor, you're just gonna flip over, lose your confidence. Take your time, take your time. The wall should be there, just a touch. Okay, for being upside down for now, that's it. We're gonna look at two more movements that you can incorporate into your workout to help you develop the lines that you need. These are very, very basic exercises, but if you practice them, they'll help you get that mind-body connection that you need, especially when you're upside down. So for these, we're gonna lay down. First one, on our stomach. And we're gonna focus on the shape that we want to be in when we handstand. We're gonna have our hands flat on the floor. We don't wanna arch our back. What we wanna do is push our armpits down towards the floor, and then our stomach, we want to hollow. And we wanna point our toes. This position here is where I wanna be when I handstand, not here. Again, it's a pretty tricky position, so try holding for 10 seconds. Repeating this over and over until it becomes second nature. Then when you're upside down, you won't even need to think about it. So we can do this exercise laying on our front. We can also do this exercise laying on our back. Again, you don't want to be arched. We want to bring our lower back to the floor, point our toes. And you see my arms have come off the floor, my fingertips, because I'm hollering. My shoulders are tight, so I want to work on pushing my hands down while staying hollow. Work for about 10 seconds, I have a break, and do this over and over. It's quite a simple exercise, and you could do it for a good few minutes. The more you practice this on a daily basis, the more likely it's going to become a natural practice when you do your handstands. So, to recap, we've got headstands, handstand walk-ups, handstand kick-ups, handstand kick-ups, and then bring your feet away from the wall, and to finish up, some form practice on the floor, laying on your stomach and on your back. Well, that brings us to the end of how to handstand. I'm sure you've enjoyed this video, so please smash that like button and share this video with your friends, family, and anyone else who wants to flip their life upside down. Remember, subscribe if you haven't already because we release a new video every Saturday, 6 p.m. London time. And if you live in the London area, why not join us from next week and get your handstand on for the next five weeks with us here at the Temple. Well, until next time, 再见。